I think before I begin to explain why this version of the Golden State Warriors is the best version that we've seen, especially during, I'll just put it like this, during the Steph Curry era of the Golden State Warriors, which is basically the last decade, this version, this year's version of the Golden State Warriors is the best version. Now, is it the most talented version? No, I would pretty much think it's conclusive that the most talented version of the Golden State Warriors is the version that had Steph, Dre, Clay, and Kevin Durant. Obviously, that is the most talented version of the team. And I'm not even saying that this is the most prolific version of the Golden State Warriors because obviously the most prolific version of this team is the 73-9 and regular season win record Golden State Warriors team in 2016-2017, even though that team did not win the finals. No, this team is better than both of those teams. And there's a few reasons for this. And again, just to explain my definition of best, what what version between this year's team, the most talented team that had Kevin Durant, and the most prolific team that went 73-9, and nine, if I'm putting my money on any one of those teams to win in a seven-game series, or even just in a one-game, just who's better, who would win? I'm taking this new version of the Golden State Warriors, and there's there's a few different wrinkles to it. Um, to begin with, I think that the thing that makes the Golden State Warriors, that makes their machine so incredible, is the fact that everybody has to play off of everybody else. Everybody, you know, there can't be one member of any of the five that are on the floor that are you know out of it in terms of a focus standpoint all of these guys need to be engaged on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball offensively that's obviously led by Steph Curry and Draymond Green and defensively it's led by Draymond Green as well and I think part of it that also makes it so unique for Golden State is not just the fact that they have already an incredible wealth of knowledge of the game both Curry, Draymond Green, and even including Clay, including younger guys like Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Kevon Looney. All of these guys have, towards the top of the league, basketball IQ, rivaled by only guys with names like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, just to name a couple. You know, there's very few players in the NBA that rival those guys basketball intelligence then you throw in the fact that Steph Draymond even Kavon Looney to an extent with Clay Thompson have all been playing together for the past what seven eight years now at this type of level of play these guys are so used to this and part of the reason that this has been such an easy series for them against Dallas is they have a sort of experience playing a Luka Doncic type player with all of those finals that they had against LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, the way that Luka is orchestrating the offense for Dallas and is able to put his imprint on the game is the closest thing we've seen to what LeBron was doing for the Cleveland Cavaliers in his second stint when he was in Cleveland. <clears throat> now, is Luka Doncic this year the exact same player as LeBron James back then? No. No. Not at all. What I'm saying is the way both of those guys carried their offenses and in the fashion that they do it is very similar. And this is why Golden State has had such an easy time against, against Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. Now, what makes it different for the Golden State Warriors is the lineups and the roster and the depth that this Golden State Warriors team has always had. You know, Golden State's mantra over the last decade has always been strength in numbers. And before in their title runs, they had one of the most deepest teams in the NBA 
from not just talent, but just pure hardworking players. But even comparing the roster back then when they were making those finals appearances to what the team looks like now, and just to illustrate my point, I'll put up a graphic of what the teams look like. I mean, back then it was the obvious four, right? It was Steph, it was Clay, it was Draymond, and it was Andre Iguodala. Who, those are the four guys who have been there the whole time. Iguodala obviously was traded away, but he came back. He's been there. He's been the common denominator, one of the four common denominators between both of these iterations of teams, both then and now. Back then, along with those four, it was Harrison Barnes for a couple of years, and then it was Kevin Durant for the next few. But your role players is really where it makes the difference. Your role players back then, it was the Brazilian blur, Leandro Barbosa. It was Mr. <laughs> Turnaround Jump Shot, Sean Livingston, who I think still has the most unguardable jump shot I've ever seen in NBA history. You've got big men like and- Andre- Andrew Bogut and Festus Azili. You got Mo Spates and David Lee. I mean, you compare that to now, the fifth guy, instead of having a fifth guy for the Golden State Warriors like you used to have between Harrison Barnes and Kevin Durant, you've got guy five, six, and seven with Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, and Kevon Looney. And then your bench, even though he's not playing anymore, it's Gary Payton. It's two rookies between Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. It's Otto Porter, who's a great 3 and D player. And then you have guys like Nemanja Bialica, Juan Toscano Anderson, and Damian Lee, who were, you know, played major roles for this team throughout the entire season. So obviously, the pieces around the stars are better. I think the coaching is better. I think, especially towards the end of that first run, that first championship window that Golden State has, you know, when they ended with KD and they had the Klay Thompson injury, I think Steve Kerr had a chance to really develop himself as a head coach over those next two crucial years of his career. Because let's be honest, not a lot of coaches make it through that kind of turmoil. Not a lot of coaches are able to make it through two really, really tough years. And that first year where Steph was injured and it really was only Draymond left on the floor, that was a tough year to be the Golden State Warriors head coach. And Steve Kerr made it through. And I think for it, he's ever the more better. Not only is he ever the more better, Draymond Green was better because of that season. I think Steph Curry had a sort of... uh, I guess not angst to get back and be back at his MVP type level performer. But I think he wanted, you know, that injury helped his career more than anything in terms of giving him a setback that he needed to come back from. And that's the same thing to be said for pretty much everybody on this team. You know, Clay Thompson with his injuries, Draymond Green, after going through a year of pretty much two years of playing almost meaningless basketball compared to what he's used to. Steph Curry getting back to MVP level performance. And the rest of these guys. I mean, Kevon Looney has always been an afterthought on this Warriors team. Otto Porter Jr., this is his, what, third team in five years? And he was considered one of the worst contracts of the last five to ten years that was given to him by the Chicago Bulls. I mean, Gary Payton's the second, even though, like I said, he hasn't been playing. He was a G League alumni, and this is definitely not the first team he's been on. You know, a lot of these guys have stories that go back before they were a warrior and have moments in their career where it automatically, you know, once they got the Golden State, it seemed like that moment happened for them, and the light went on, and they knew exactly what they needed to do. And that's what this Golden State Warriors team this year has been able to do better than everybody in the league is they know what they're good at it's obviously going to run through Steph it's obviously going to run through Draymond and now that Clay's back there's going to be some things that run through Clay as well but now that they have other guys now that they have a guy off the bench like a Jordan Poole now that they have a fifth guy in the starting lineup like an Andrew Wiggins 
now that they have a consistent threat at the five position with Kevon Looney, who will always be there on the rebounds and will always be there on putbacks. Your bench, consisting of guys like Kaminga, you know, young guys like Kaminga, like Jordan Poole, like Moses Moody, even, you know, sprinkled in during the regular season with Juan Toscano Anderson. Right now, this team is better than it's ever been. And honestly, no matter who comes out of the East, I think the Warriors at this point have proven that there is almost no team that could beat them in the finals. And at this point, they should probably be a lock to win it. 